So just to set the scene, we talk about eradication and elimination and we sort of take it for granted that we know the difference between those two concepts. So for eradication, um, we have the famous example of smallpox and that was very much an acute viral illness that caused a lot of morbidity and mortality globally. And we were able to achieve eradication of smallpox through the use of vaccination. And because it was such an acute disease, people didn't carry that disease with them forever. So once um, people had smallpox, if they recovered, they were immune. If um, we vaccinated people, it prevented infection. And so we were able to contain smallpox through the use of vaccination and delivering vaccines all over the world to eventually completely eradicate the disease so that there are no new infections. And we're striving to achieve that in polio. We still have sporadic cases of polio, but we're hoping um, in the next years that there will be an announcement that we've eradicated polio. But for a lot of these other diseases that we're focusing on, they cause chronic, lifelong infections. So for HIV, once you're infected, you're infected for the rest of your life and you can pass on that illness to your sexual partners. For viral hepatitis, for HCV, for example, 70% of people who are exposed to HCV become chronic carriers and they carry that disease for the rest of their life and they can pass it on through blood transfusions and contact with contaminated blood. <laughs> So to eradicate those diseases, we have to have the complete suite of tools. We need vaccines to prevent new infections. We need treatments that can actually cure people. And we need to implement harm reduction measures to prevent um, people becoming exposed to the viruses in the first place. But of course, we don't have all of those tools for the four diseases that we're working on. We don't have effective vaccines for hepatitis C, malaria, HIV or TB. We have fabulous treatments now for hepatitis C that can cure more than 95% of people in three months of their hepatitis C illness. But it's still very dependent on delivering those services to people and identifying who needs treatment. So in these cases we talk about elimination and that's the um, reduction in transmission in a defined geographical area to near zero. So we talk about much more um, defined geographic regions, for example in Australia we're striving to halve the number of people infected um, with HCV within the next um, couple of years and hope to achieve the World Health Organisation um, targets um, by 2020. But we can do that in Australia because we have great healthcare systems and the ability to find people with hepatitis C and deliver treatments. That's not necessarily the case in the rest of the world. So I guess one of the Burnett's unique strengths in delivering elimination programs is that we have the full breadth of the capacity that's needed for elimination. We have um, world leading researchers that are developing vaccines and point of care diagnostic tests to identify people with hepatitis C and HIV. We have um, expertise, long standing re reputation in delivering harm reduction measures to the community to identify risks associated with acquiring new infections. And this allows us to put together a much more programmatic response to disease elimination that really harnesses all of our skills in those areas to bring together the best tools and strategies so that we can reduce the number of new infections and treat people with existing infection. So I'll give you an example of our hepatitis C um, disease elimination program which actually got off the ground last year. So hepatitis C um, infects 130 million people around the world. 250,000 people live in Australia with hepatitis C and the majority of those people live in resource constrained settings. In Australia, HCV disproportionately affects people who inject drugs and people in prisons. They suffer 
severe discrimina discrimination and are marginalised, meaning that they are often lost to the healthcare system. And this presents great challenges to delivering treatments to people with hepatitis C. As I said, new direct acting antivirals that were discovered through over 20 years of groundbreaking medical research that was done around the world. We've now got fantastic drugs that can cure 95% of people of their hepatitis C infection within three months. The restriction, of course, is that you need to identify people with hepatitis C. And it might surprise you that the Centers for Disease Control have estimated that more than 50% of people are unaware of their HCV infection status. So even if we treated all of the people in the world right now with hepatitis C, there's probably just as many people that we don't even know about yet that have hepatitis C. And those people, of course, go on to transmit infection. We don't yet have a vaccine um, for use to prevent hepatitis C infection. And that's the focus of my laboratory's research, to develop such a vaccine that we can deliver to people before they become exposed to hepatitis C. <coughs> But we have a number of fantastic studies that have been funded. For example, our CoEC study will treat gay and bisexual men who have both HIV and hepatitis C. And our EC study is establishing a nurse-led model of care in community settings to increase the uptake of DAAs in people who inject drugs. Many of our strategies are not solely implemented by the work we do at the Burnett. We rely on our partnerships with other medical research institutes, for example, the Kirby Institute in Sydney. We rely on um, cooperation with government through um, development of new policies, with community groups to actually engage with the community who are, in, who are affected with HCV, and hospitals, nurses and doctors, of course, to deliver the treatments. But since March 2016, which is when um, Susan Lay actually made the new direct acting antivirals available to anyone with hepatitis C in Australia, over 5,000 people have received treatment in Victoria. And in Australia, over 20,000 people have been treated for their hepatitis C. And that's of an estimated 250,000 people. So we've already managed to reduce the number of infected people by over 10%. <coughs> Now just to put that into context, in the previous five years, we treated about 5,000 people in Australia for hepatitis C. So this is a revolution in treatment for people for hepatitis C. They can now have treatment in three months with minimal side effects and be cured of their disease forever. And what's even more remarkable is that 60% of people in Australia who have suffered or are suffering HCV-associated liver disease have received treatment, which further um, restricts their illness so they don't go on to progress um, to liver cancer. And this, in, this in these cases, it also um, causes almost a complete cure and prevents the need for a liver transplant. That's an enormous saving to the healthcare system and, of course, an enormous change in people's lives to know that they can go on and lead a normal life. So that's fantastic news for Australians, but the majority of people living with HCV live in Africa, South America and Asia. Almost 65 million people live in Asia with hepatitis C. And to address the major barrier to achieve elimination in resource constrained settings, we're accelerating the development of, of a low cost HCV vaccine into human clinical trials. We're developing new rapid diagnostic tests to identify those who most urgently require treatment to prevent liver disease through David Anderson's work. We're improving testing for HCV um, to further improve access to antiviral therapy. Um, sorry, improved testing for HCV will further improve access to new antiviral therapy. And a vaccine, the use of a vaccine in this also prevents new infections and reinfections meaning that once we eliminate HCV from vaccinated populations, they are now resistant to new infections. That's really our vision for our Hep C elimination program, to use a combination of DAAs with a vaccine to achieve elimination, and potentially one day we can also use the two together to achieve eradication. 
So this programmatic response underpins our disease elimination program for HCV and will use a similar framework to tackle TB, malaria and HIV. But we also recognise that each disease requires a unique strategy and we must um, align ourselves and work globally to achieve these goals, um, to reduce the burden of disease and achieve health equity, which is of course the mission of the burn -in. So thank you very much for listening and I'll hand back to David. Thank you.